you. All right. Hi, my name is Grace, and I am the founder of Mink. Mink is a desktop printer that prints makeup. It can turn any image and instantly uh, transform it into a wearable color cosmetic, turning any camera, phone, or laptop into an endless beauty aisle. So before I begin, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a serial inventor. I've done everything from medical devices all the way to jewelry. Um, and not too long ago, I was a student at HBS, and I wanted to create a makeup product. And what I found out was um, that the makeup industry um, makes a whole lot of money on a whole lot of bullshit. And um, they do this by um, charging a huge premium on something that technology um, provides to us for free. And that thing is color. So um, the, the makeup industry is worth $55 billion. And in the US, 70% um, of all makeup is purchased in mass outlets like Walmart. But Walmart can't give you all the colors that expensive, expensive prestige stores like Sephora can um, because mass prices are driven by um, uh, volume discounts. And so they can only select colors that are gonna sell out in mass volumes, right? And so um, if you want the cool niche colors, you have to go to expensive Sephora. But who wants to pay expensive Sephora prices? No one, that's who. So that's what the mink is. It gives you the selection of prestige and it combines it with convenience of mass. But I, we, we beat that, actually, um, because we're giving you the selection of the internet. And we're beating the convenience of mass because we're giving you the convenience of your own freaking house. So this is the Mink. The Mink is a piece of proprietary hardware. Um, and uh, you do not need any new software for this. All you need is a color picker to pick the, he pick the hex code and another piece of software to print it. Um, also, the, uh, the hardware works just like an ordinary printer, inkjet printer. You need ink and substrates, both of which are uh, FDA compliant and um, come from the same exact sources as those of trusted brands you find in stores. I'm going to initially retail this for about $300 for the hardware, and um, the ink and the substrates should be about pretty much commodity price, so it's very accessible to everybody. Um, my initial target market, they're girls, ages 13 to 21. They have not formed any habits yet, and they're still experimenting. So we're going to grow up with them. And that's how we're going to change how the world buys makeup. Plus, this is how they already learn how to put on makeup. This is their natural habitat. So clicking to print, that's just the next natural step. And now I'm going to cut to the demo. Uh, can we switch? Oh, OK, thanks. Um, so I'm going to put in a blank chip right now. This is the substrate. It's the printer, which is the first step. Um, as I mentioned, you don't need any new software for this. Um, so I'm just going to use uh, Colorzilla and Photoshop. Um, so imagine I'm 16-year-old Amanda, and um, I'm watching my favorite YouTube blogger, Michelle Fan. And she's showing me how to put on eye makeup. And I see something I like. I stop the video. And I copy the color. Then I move over to Photoshop. And I paste the code. Boom. And I just use the paint bucket tool. And I fill it in. And just like any ordinary printer, I just press print. And make sure it's selected on the mink. And we go. And what this printer is going to do now is just spread the ink onto the substrate, just like it's dyeing it. Um, please ignore the paper that's just engaging the printer. The prototype is going to look like what I just showed to you on the screen at the end. And once it's done, it's going to be immediately ready to apply.
So, just take it out. What you have is an eyeshadow. And then once it's ready, just put it on your hand. Just do a little more. And now you have, where is it? Makeup. And then if she wants to take it with her, you just put it in the case and it's done. Um, where's my clicker? So the Mink allows the internet to become the world's largest beauty store. It not only unlocks images, it unlocks pixels. So um, if you see your friend with a cute, if you see your friend with a cute lipstick, you can just take a picture of it and then print it out. Um, but I think the most important thing about this all is that it's finally training our girls to understand that um, the definition of beauty is something that they should control, not our corporations. And I think that's really something that's worth fighting for. So with that, um, I'm excited to announce the launch of uh, the developer sign up on gracemint.com. We are a hardware company, um, but I believe there's so much opportunity in software, and I invite you all to join us in our journey. Thank you. Judges. We should start with the only judge who's likely to print the makeup. <laughs> um, so I've got a bunch of different questions. Yeah. Um, so you, which, which types of different makeup do you print? So you mentioned eyeshadows and lipsticks? Yeah, eyeshadows, lipsticks, powders, um, I mean, pretty much anything with pigment or color. Um, I haven't decided yet if I want to introduce it via the substrates or via the cartridges. Um, you can do either or. Um, but pretty much everything. I would first start with um, the simple ones, like um, eyeshadows, lipsticks, the weird stuff that they do. You know the ones that they, the, the skin correcting things? You know, the, they kind of like, the ones we don't need, but they tell us we need, like those things? Um. <laughs> well, I guess my, my question is- Blushes. Like, how, what, what kinds of textures can you handle? So you're, you're doing some powders, you're doing some creams. Yeah. So, does, and then substrate's able to do any of them? Or that's the, thing. The, the application actually says, am I printing a lipstick or, you know, a well, blush that's the thing. or so if you, Yeah, that's the thing. So, um, totally understand your question. Um, so if I introduce it via substrate, right, then you could handle anything, because all you're printing out is pigment. Sure. So all you have to do is get a cream substrate, so you can virtually print out anything you want. If I, if I print it out via, via uh, cartridge, yeah, pretty much you could, but you would need, if you want to do a foundation, you would need a very big cartridge. So I don't know if that would be kind of feasible to do it that way. So it depends on how, it would be a business decision, decision I think, at that point. Sure. Um, one, one thing that's really popular in, in uh, makeup is metallics or yeah. shimmer. Right. Are you able to do things like shimmer? Absolutely. Um, and do you need a special cartridge for that, or no, it's just part of what the printer can print? Um, you would need a special cartridge for it. Okay. Um, and how, do you, um, how accurate is the color? I mean, I think people always see the issue that, like, you know, a color looks one way on the screen, then when you print it out, it looks different. Okay, yeah, so I think this, this is kind of like the strength for this. Um, so, I mean, A, um, I, I love this technology because Inkjet is so mature. There's so much like color collect correction software, but I know a lot of photographers say it's like crappy and they don't like it, which is fine. Um, but I think with, with this, um, if you don't like it, the, the, the kind of the consumer product is gonna be commodity price. So you could do a test run. If you don't like it, just use the spectrum and make it darker or lighter, and then run it again. And then when you get the right color, just print out the full run, so. And I guess one, one question I have is around the experience of picking a color. Right. But I think it's really empowering and interesting to say, hey, pick any color off the screen, sample it, we can print that. But it seems like it would almost be more efficient to just sort of have like a Pantone set or you know a set of different pigments that people could then say, oh, I want a pink in this range, or I want to add a sparkle of this. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. So, how, so, so why, I think it's interesting in terms of the user experience to yeah. be able to pick anything, but why not just have a set of swatches and or a spectrum that you could pick from? I think it's because, um, I think it's more of the, the, the way um, someone 
experiences what they want to wear. It's more like you're, you see your girlfriend, you're viewing Instagram and you see, like girls, right? They, they see a picture of Taylor Swift. It's like, ooh, she has a cute red lipstick on. Where did she get that from, right? And then they have to like look it up or whatever and then go to the store. Like, it's not like they're like looking at like a color chart and like, that's my lipstick. That's not how it goes, you know? Yeah. And so if they can just click on it and print it out, I think that's just more of the user experience on how you discover makeup. But I think, and, you know, but, but iterating on that, maybe you can have, if you have a community part of your website experience where people, someone has gone and figured out what the right code was for the Taylor Swift lipstick, other people can just be lazy and piggyback and say, you know, download, I'll, I'll take for, that. Thingiverse for <laughs> lipstick. Thing of us? Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I mean, that's that's what I want. Like, you know, the. I mean, I'm I'm de I'm certainly not like a software I software person. So I'm hoping the developer community would make something like that. That would be pretty good, you know, cool and stuff. So. And I guess my last question is: uh, I just was talking to someone in the beauty industry, and we talked about the fact that for almost all personal care products, there's an organic version, organic toothpaste, yeah. organic lotions. The one thing that hasn't seemed to be cracked is organic and or healthy color. Because to get color, a lot of times you have to do something that's you know a little bit less, you know, yeah. a little bit more artificial, organic, more chemicals involved to actually sure. get that. There's always been, of course, a lot of issues in terms of like you know I remember the red M and M's back in the day were actually cancerous until they found the right pigment. Sure, yeah. So Red's how do you even handle color. for the the helpfulness yeah. of it? So so yeah, I totally understand. Um, so like uh, I understand. So um, the more kind of like the natural pigments and stuff, those are a little more dull. They are, mm -hmm. um, but. I would give that option. If, if someone does want more of the natural organic ones, they can buy a more natural organic cartridge. That's fine. I would provide that option. But if you want the more kind of vibrant colors, you can buy more vibrant colors. That's not a problem. But they would, they would know it would be more vibrant. Because you said they're FDA tested cartridges, but have they been tested in terms of being worn? No, no, no. They're FDA. On skin? Yeah. So I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so this is the thing with the beauty industry, FDA compliant. The beauty industry is not regulated by yeah yeah the FDA is not the beauty industry is not regulated by the FDA uh, the FDA um, so as long as you're compliant with the colors then you're fine um, if you want to go through additional testing um, then that's up to the company which we will do I was gonna say yeah. the question is how has it been tested on skin. Has it been, t yeah, on, no, my, over long, on, on my skin, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but so. Over long, over long periods of time. Um, well, I, I, I just started, I just made this in January. Yeah. So um, it's been since January, so yes. Can you talk a little bit about the IP status of this? Um, patent stuff? Yeah, so um, yes, patents have been filed. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I have some questions. Yeah. Um, so it's a cool demo. Um, the t talk about the hardware a little bit. You said it's going to retail for 300. Yeah, about 300. I think, about yeah. 300. And the target market is these are uh, kids who. Um, I mean, one of the questions that begs for me is that it seems like a very high yeah. price for something that I may want to just try once or twice. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, um, is there is there a way to drive that pricing down? Is there a different model where you could drop the price of the units and charge more for the cartridges? I mean, certainly what printers have done. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like for me personally. I, I I don't think charging more for like the 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 substrates or the inks are something I really want to do, just because of what I've seen happen to like the the whole inkjet printer industry where you know you have the whole cis market and the black market of things coming up. I, I just don't think that would be the right place for me to the avenue for this to go. Um, I, I do have other ideas and product features that I'm working on right now where um, application would be another feature that would want people to buy this that would make them shift up to the $300 price point. Right, because I wonder, I mean, today brand plays a huge role in, in this, right? I mean, that's brand. I mean, the kind of the bullshit piece you're <laughs> talking about, that's kind of, that's brand. Uh, and brand discovery. Um, so, you know, you're, you're getting people to change their workflow or how their, their purchase flows significantly. And um, it just seems like, expensive. I, I think I, 
I, I see what you, what you mean. Um, with makeup, it's very interesting where brand for skin, like foundations, um, foundations and, and facial stuff, that's very important. But with eyeshadows and lipsticks, frequently convenient, like drugstore and things like that, they usually downgrade. So it depends on the makeup type. To follow up with John's question, do you have a sense of the average cost uh, a user would spend on regular makeups versus if they were to buy a machine and just yeah. print their own makeup for the remainder of the year, the delta in that? So the, um, the average consumer spends about $300 on makeup per year and $15,000 in their lifetime. Okay. So one way to think about maybe selling this is um, uh, essentially as a subscription as opposed to having to pay it so that if you could sell to somebody for $10 a month or $15 a month as opposed to 340 bucks, um, then you might be able to tap into that youth market. And as I, I agree with John that the price point seems high. I mean, I, Think about my girls when they were 15 or 16. I, just, I don't know if they would shell out 390 bucks for a printer for makeup, but if they could, you know, join a makeup print club, right? And part of it was you get the printer and you commit to, you know, 24 months of $10 a month or something. I'm making this up. I, I don't even know that the numbers add up, but some kind of innovative pricing model like that, I think, might might help and, and trying to get the cost down. Uh, obviously, I don't know what's, what's inside this thing. Yeah, I mean, definitely um, the $300 price point, um, I've been talking to a lot of uh, manufacturers and stuff. That's definitely something I, it, I, I padded it just so um, I wouldn't get really hard questions from you guys um, by lowballing it. <laughs> um, but um, uh, it, it's, it's basically kind of like something that, you know, I definitely could kind of like drive down um, and it's inkjet. It's really mature. How much does how much does an inkjet printer cost? If I, if I go out and buy an inkjet printer, it's like <coughs> you can get an HP for thirty bucks. So I guess the question is, why couldn't this be ninety nine dollars? The ninety nine dollars is the magic number for electronic products. You get the ninety nine dollars, you get to mainstream. Anything that's over ninety nine dollars is not mainstream. Well, I think I would. I, I mean, I would think that you could either get the hardware low enough, or there's other ways you could market it. And it may play too much into the factor that you're trying to drive out of the industry, but another way of doing it, for example, there's like a number of, of cosmetic companies over time that have tried to print like a pigment or a color on demand. So if you said, you know, look, you can walk into a drugstore, like show a swatch on your phone, or, you know, like transmit your color swatch to the machine, and then it just prints out an eyeshadow that gets sold, right? You could actually drive down the, co the price of the cosmetics, and, you know, it's a fun experience that you get to go because you know, if you can't get the hardware low enough, you could always market it that way. That's great. So we're unfortunately out of time. Great job, though. That was okay. Mink. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.